The lead inside a pencil isn't actually lead. It's mostly graphite, which was discovered in England in the mid-1500s, giving birth to the pencil industry. In 1795, a French chemist invented a new type of pencil lead, made of graphite powder and clay fired in an oven, making it possible to produce leads with different hardness. For the pencil's body, you need a type of wood that's soft enough to sharpen, yet strong enough not to bend under the writer's hand pressure. This German pencil factory uses cedar from California. The wood is 5 millimeters thick and arrives pre-cut in slats of 18 by 7 centimeters. One by one, the slats pass under a giant cutting wheel. It carves grooves that will become the channel down the middle that holds the lead. The next machine fills the grooves with glue, a special formulation that's slightly elastic. This cushions the lead so that it's less likely to break inside the channel. Every second slat moves on to another conveyor belt. The ones that stay on this line head toward the machine that lays in the lead. The lead is made of a graphite and clay mixture, baked in an oven at more than 800 degrees Celsius. The lead laying machine's wheel loads itself with leads. Their spacing matches the grooves in the slats. It's the same process for colored pencils, only the leads are made of wax, clay and pigments, with no baking required. Now for the slats that move to that other conveyor belt. An automated arm flips each one over, slides it across a glue applicator, then drops it onto a leaded slat on the other conveyor belt. All the steps to this point have culminated in what is effectively a lead sandwich. Now a plunger squeezes those sandwiches together with a full ton of pressure. It compresses them for an hour while the glue dries. After that, it's just a matter of slicing the sandwiches into pencils. This shaping machine makes the hexagonal profile in two steps. First, its upper cutter forms three sides on top, then its lower cutter shapes three sides on the bottom. As soon as the bottom side is cut, the pencils separate. A worker pulls a sample pencil from each batch coming off the line and manually sharpens it to spot check lead quality. Then he applies force to the tip until it breaks. For a pencil to pass this strength test, it has to withstand at least two kilograms of force. Now it's time to dress that bare wood. One at a time, the pencils shoot through a device called a lacquering head. It coats the wood in paint, yellow in this case. It takes four coats of paint to completely hide the wood grain. A fifth lacquering head paints a black stripe, this company's trademark. Then a sixth head seals the paint job with a transparent lacquer. From the paint line, the pencils make their way to a stamping machine. At an astounding rate of 500 pencils a minute, the machine heat transfers foil lettering from a plastic film to the painted wood. Last stop, the rubber tip assembly machine. First, it squeezes the top of the pencil to slide on an aluminum ferrule. Then it inserts a rubber eraser into the ferrule's other end and squeezes that tight. European style pencils have a painted cap instead, the color indicating how hard the lead is. After a coat of transparent sealer, the pencils take a series of dips in the first color then once that dries, in the second color. The final coat is a high-gloss lacquer. The pencils are finally ready to roll across a grinding drum for sharpening. By the time they roll off, they're pointed perfection. Looking as good as they perform, Today's pencils sure have the right stuff. <laughs>